Have you guys seen all of the issues, all of the troubles, all of the drama that's been stirred up because it was announced that Kendrick Lamar will be headlining the 2025 Apple Music World Super Bowl halftime show? Kendrick Lamar is, high, is headlining the Super Bowl halftime show and it's called so much passa, so much drama that I needed to talk about it with you guys today because I think some of it is a bit overblown but some of it also is like I guess for some people an opportunity for them to air their grievances because maybe some of them didn't care too much for the people involved so let's continue with the article so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about I need to get my screen going because it's getting a bit annoying here bear with me a second doom so here's what happened so according to hollywood reporter kendrick lamar is set to headline the 2025 apple music super bowl halftime show rock nation nfl and apple music made the announcement on sunday the big game will take place on february 9th 2025 at the caesar's palladium seat so caesar's superdome in new orleans it will air on fox Lamar previously performed at the Hip Hop Heavy 2022 halftime show starring Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Mary J. Blige and 50 Cent. All the performance, um, along with executive producer Jay-Z and Jesse Collins, were a standard live variety special Emmy for the epic performance. Creative direction for Lamar's up and coming performance will be provided by um, P.G. Lang and creative direction founded by rap star and his close collaborator Dave Free. Filmmaker and producer who's directed or co-created or co-directed the majority of Lamar's music videos. The quote here says, rap music is still the most impactful genre to date, and I'll be there to remind the world why they got the right one, Lamar 37 says in a statement. Jay-Z and his Rock Nation company are returning to produce in the halftime show for the sixth year. The rap icon and mogul won his second Emmy for co-directing Rihanna's 2023 halftime show performance a long time Hamish Hamilton um, becoming one of the rare black directors to win the out outstanding director um, direct so to being one of the rare black directors to win in the outstanding directing for a variety special category this year's halftime show featuring Usher um, was nominated for three Emmys and became the most watched live halftime show of all time Kendrick Lamar is a true once in a generation artist and performer his deep love for hip-hop and culture informs his artistic vision. He has unparalleled ability to define and influence culture globally. Kendrick Lamar's work transcends music and its impact will be felt for years to come. Lamar has been critical and commercial success since his release his 2011 mixtape Section 80 and major label debut 2012's Good Kid Mad City. He's won 17 Grammys and his 2017 debut Damn won the Pulitzer Prize for Music making him the first non-classical or jazz artist to win the prestigious award. He's also earned a Best Original Song Oscar nomination for the 2018 All Stars and the Black Panther. This year, he emerged atop of the Billboard charts with the anthem Not Like Us and Like That and with Future and Metro. So, this silly, silly bit of news caused so much issues. First off, this is amazing. What an amazing honour for Kendrick to be given such a gig especially considering that he's not like an established kind of like legacy act. Usually these type of events, they usually, you know, it makes more sense to kind of give it to a legacy act because of the nature of the event, um, because of the the people mostly watching it. You'd imagine a lot of them will probably be more familiar with some of the legacy legendary artists who might be, let's say, like 40 plus or 50 plus. Some people have been around for a long time. Cool. So Kendrick gets it now. It's fucking amazing. It's also amazing just in terms of a live show performance. Think about all we've seen from Kendrick when it comes to live shows, when it comes to performances, when it comes to production, when it comes to stage shows, when it comes to just, you know, theatrics and whatever on the screen and dances. Like the guy goes crazy. When it comes to music videos, he goes crazy. Let's not lie. So we know for sure this halftime show is going to be fucking bananas. Then we also have reference of the pop out recently, right? He did the pop out recently, um, and that was fucking great. And that was, I think, our last minute job. And he done really well with that one as well. That kind of reminded everybody of Kendrick Lamar's greatness. So I have no shadow of a doubt that Kendrick is gonna fucking kill it. He's gonna fucking tear it apart. Everybody that's doubting him will eat crow. There'll be a lot of people on the timeline copying please and doing some fucking, you know, walking back some of their points and saying how they weren't familiar with Kendrick's game. Because a lot of us, maybe if you're not really balls deep in Kendrick's discography, if you just listen to hip hop casually, you're not really that invested in his discography. But if you forget how many hits he's got, 
He's got bops. He's got bops. He's got tunes. So for sure, he's gonna go crazy. He might have some crazy features. He might. He's just gonna have. He's gonna have. He's just. I'm, I'm sure he's gonna put on a great show. Visually, he's gonna put on a fucking great show. Especially with all this noise on social media, you know he's gonna respond well. You know him and Day Three are gonna be like, all right, cool. Let's go chef up quickly and tell these guys while Guan. Plus, if I'm not mistaken, this is happening here. This is happening in February of next year. That's the end of the, you know, of the end of the season when Super Bowl usually happens. So they've got a long time, a long bit of lead up time to actually plan this properly and get it done where it needs to be done. And most likely as well, because culture and because social media moves so quickly, everybody's quote unquote up in arms now about Kendrick getting it. But by the time it comes around, everyone will have forgotten about how vocal they were about Kendrick getting it. But he won't. Him and his team won't have forgotten. They're going to remember. They're going to be on business. So they're going to be reminding us of what we said on timeline. They're going to make making a point to make sure that we eat our, our words and we eat a bit of humble pie. So you know for sure, everything is kind of set up for them to put on a fucking sick show. And like I said, what a great way to kind of cap off the entirety of the battle with Drake and shit. And everybody thinking you'll get washed and essentially you win the battle and then you come out victorious by playing at the main show, at the Super Bowl show, especially, you know, when Drake has had some bars in his, um, you know, lyrics pertaining towards the Super Bowl. So on that front, it's fucking fantastic. I'm so happy for Kendrick Lamar and I really cannot wait to see the performance myself. I can't wait to see it. The thing that's funny about it, though, has been the response online and all of the conspiracy theories about why he may have got it why someone like a little Wayne was overlooked, especially when you consider the Super Bowl is happening in New Orleans, which is Little Wayne's hometown, and how what that would have meant to the culture, and the fact that Little Wayne's a avid football fan and sports fan in general, and the fact that he's been pining and wanting to perform at the halftime show for a long time, and he's made that very clear. It just seems a bit odd, especially like I said before, the past has been usually like legacy acts performing at the halftime show. And you wouldn't call Kedrick a legacy act. Although he's an, you know, although I think him and Rihanna are about the same age, maybe that p puts a point out of there. But, you know, you know what I mean in terms of legacy act. So maybe people were kind of surprised that he would get it over someone like a Lil Wayne. But then again, you think about Lil Wayne, and I don't know about you guys, but as much as I love Lil Wayne, his recent performances, live shows, haven't been that great. I've not really seen people raving about Lil Wayne's live performances. I've seen people talking glowingly about, I don't know, Method Man's performances. I see people talking glowingly about LL uh, Cool J. I see people talking glowingly about, you know, the Locks, Jada Kiss, Styles P, and them, them man when they perform live. I've heard people talk very glowingly about 50 Cent when he performs live. But I've not really heard people speak in glowing terms about Lil Wayne performing live. Legit. So as much as I love Lil Wayne, and I was one of those people when I grew up, when there was a who do you like better between Lil Wayne and Jay-Z, I always was a Lil Wayne guy. Always. I was that guy. I was I was always mixtape wheezy. He was the best. I didn't give a fuck. Like, I rocked with him, even when he was going through his rock phase, that cringy skateboarding truck fit phase. I was always a Wayne dude, personally. So I'm not even trying to besmirch the guy. But let's be real. Life performances-wise, especially for that sort of stage, especially for that sort of stage, I don't think Lil Wayne of now has shown us any evidence that he can be that guy. But the conversations around it are interesting regardless. Why are they interesting? They're interesting because there's this underlying feeling that because Jay-Z is involved in selecting who performs at the halftime show, and if you're not familiar with the story, allegedly it goes something like this. Colin Kaepernick gets into his issue with the NFL. He just starts kneeling. That causes him to get dropped from his team or cut from his team. Loads of other teams don't want to sign him because he's a distraction. Maybe they don't like black people. I don't know what's going on there. I don't watch football, but most likely I'd imagine a lot of the commissioners just don't want the distraction. And maybe they don't think he's good enough anyway. But that turns into a whole topic about, you know, black representation. Da, 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 da. I think this is also during the time of George Floyd. And in, in that sort of like time, in that sort of conversation, in that sort of era, sorry, there was a conversation around ownership of teams and representation and all this malarkey. And the NFL was like 90% black players, but there's no representative from the black culture to speak for us and us and us and us and us. Cool. Jay-Z puts his hand up and says, okay, I'll speak for you guys. 
So JC slips in there while this whole mess is going on with Colin Kaepernick and he becomes the like go-to person, the in-between person to kind of put into action some of the plans and some of the ideas a lot of the fucking activists and stuff had behind the kneeling and how to change football and all this malarkey representation. Da, 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 da. But in actuality, a lot of people are suggesting that Jay-Z didn't do that to help Colin Kaepernick or to help the black community at large over there in America. He solely did it for his own selfish gains in that Jay-Z's long-term ambition is to own the football team. He's always wanted to be a billionaire. He's you he spoken, you know, they've got that famous lyric, I'm a businessman, I'm a businessman. What is that? No, I'm a businessman, not a businessman, or whatever that lyric is, you know what I'm talking about. So he's always been, you know, a bit of a capitalist in that regard. We love him for that. Very business savvy. But allegedly he's always wanted to have a football team. But it's been one of those hurdles that he's been never been able to get over. And owning a football team isn't as easy as buying a house. You kind of have to rub some elbows, shake some hands, kiss some babies, you know, go to fucking, you know, Epstein's house and shit. You have to do some mad stuff. So to get his foot in the door, he became this go-to person, right? He became this go-to person where he's like, okay, I'm going to be the go-to people for the culture and for NFL. But he didn't do it to help Colin. He did it solely for his own purposes. But obviously, Jay-Z is also known to be very petty. And have a loads of beefs with people in the industry that he still holds on to this day. Case in point, Dame Dash. He's got his dentures falling out of his mouth and, you know, he doesn't really pay him any dust. He had a Jay's, he had a blue, he had a, he had a fucking, um, he had an exhibition recently. I forgot what was it, what was it for. And he, there was no mention of Dame Dash in any of the exhibition, although all the roles that, you know, although all the good things he'd done for Rockefeller was quite disappointing to see. Even though they, they broke up of a horrible term still. He holds on to things, right? So he holds on to things. And now it seems like people are suggesting that now he's in a position to choose who, perf who performs at the halftime show. Some of his own beefs are coming into play in that people are suggesting that he may have not selected Little Wayne to perform at the halftime show because of his long-standing beef, quote-unquote, with Little Wayne, but also most recently because of his beef with, with Drake and with also his maybe need and want to position himself next to Kendrick to prop up him and to take over Drake. Because there was a suggestion that, I think academics put it out there, that there's one, there's a one big artist out there that everybody thinks Drake is cool with, but he actually hates him. Or that, you know, the person actually hates Drake. And now people are suggesting that maybe that person who everybody thought Drake was actually cool with is actually Jay-Z. But they're not actually cool. Jay-Z's always had kind of a bit of an issue with him, you know, within a kind of kept on the raps but there's been some indirects thrown at certain bars and certain lyrics and a lot of people are up in arms and upset at the fact that Lil Wayne is performing because it's his hometown they feel like he should but Jay-Z's kind of blocking that because of his long-standing issues with Lil Wayne and obviously with the Drake issues happening now at the moment he's kind of he's kind of killed two birds with one stone and of course people online are not happy predominantly Drake's friends um, and colleagues someone like Birdman came on Twitter recently and said the following, SMH, SMFH actually, not SMH, he said SMFH. Then he replied back to something Nicki Minaj said and says, these niggas pussy at Nicki Minaj, Drake and Lil Wayne, YMCMB, right? Young money, cash money. I make these niggas respect us on Gladys. Then the next tweet, hating shit for real. So Birdman is out here putting it on Gladys. When you know when he puts it on Gladys, he means business. You know, when you put on Auntie Gladys, you know. When you put on Mama Gladys, you know you mean business. So little Birdman's letting it be known that, no, we feel that way. So this is not just internet people making up rumors and starting beef, starting issues. No, this is actually somebody that's associated with Drake, that's associated with people saying this is an issue. We are perturbed. We are annoyed. Little Wayne should have got it. Well, it gets even worse in terms of people going crazy because Nicki Minaj flew off the fucking handle with some incredible tweets that really lift the lid on what's going on behind the scenes, right? So this is little, this is Nicki Minaj's tweet in defense of Lil Wayne. Denying a young black man what he rightfully put into this rap game for no other reason but your ego? Your hatred for Birdman, Drake and Nicki got you punishing Lil Wayne? Little Wayne? The GOAT? Nola, what's good? Eminem stood firm on having 50 Cent come out. A white man. Shit sad. House nigger things. 
but it's good for them. No loyalty. Welp, these niggas will keep on sunning you. <laughs> Hashtag DATLR Gag City DC. LMAO, God has feed the girl, you are God has feed them. So, Nicki Minaj, number one, referring to Lil Wayne as a young man is hilarious because I think he's like 40 something, right? But he's basically saying, she's basically saying here with her whole chest that Jay Z's issues with her, Drake, and Birdman has denied Lil Wayne an opportunity because people always say, that allegedly Lil Wayne just gets on with everybody. He's cool with everybody. Even when we were pit, trying to pit Wayne against Jay, he wasn't really with it. He loves Jay Z. Like well, Lil Wayne actually loves Jay Z. That's the, the annoying thing for like Lil Wayne fans. Lil Wayne doesn't have any animosity in his heart for anybody. He's too high. He's fucking too many fucking randoms. He's living a life. He's performing at amazing shows. He's chilling with his son. You know, he's just having a good life. Always smiling. You know, jumps onto fucking. ESPN from time to time, you know, talks about sports. He's really completely unbothered. So he really doesn't care as much as everybody, everybody else does. But it seems like his colleagues are stepping out and kind of fighting for him because probably they know he's probably not going to ever do this. You know, he's too kind of chill for it. But she's saying with her whole chest, Jay Z is a house nigger, by the way. That's crazy, by the way. Somebody with their whole chest saying Jay Z is a house nigger is fucking wild, especially a fellow artist. It continues though. Next tweet. So somebody says here, wait, this is about Wayne? Oh shit. Oh um girl, this shit is out because he would be doing this. He wouldn't be doing this. I guess for her. So the best person saying, Hey, why are you doing this for, for Wayne? He wouldn't go to town for you like this. And Nicki Minaj says, You think speaking up on injustice within your workplace should only be done if the person would do it for you? I'm really the realest nigga. Wow. At Gag City <laughs> tonight. <laughs> I swear to God, the favorite, my favorite part about these run of tweets from Nicki Minaj is that every last line or two is just another bit of promo for Gag City. Like Gag City, talk Gag City, get your tickets now. Tickets still, still there. Last minute tickets. <laughs> like, that's all it is. Like the last couple of lines in all these tweets that are going at Jay Z and exposing the industry and talking very candidly about what's going on and all the fucking shucking and jiving and all the disgusting things that happen. It's also an opportunity for her to remind people, hey, I'm selling some new shoes and I'm performing and I'm performing live somewhere. Come see me. <laughs> I fucking love it. Continuing on, another tweet from her. I tried to tell you all, but y'all wanted brunch. <laughs> LMFA, yo, I'm on the fucking roll. Wait, hacked, hacked, hacked. <laughs> and if you don't know the reference about that that basically is referencing um lato because lato the other day her account got hacked allegedly and um you know the person sent out some crazy tweets and now people are suggesting that maybe this whole hacking thing that people happen to them is not really real it's just paid promo so somebody hacks you because i think someone was saying that because lots is involved in those of beefs why wouldn't you just leak the dms if it's somebody hacked so somebody hacked her and then said fuck Nicki minaj but then it's a hack but then he didn't leak the DMs. And he didn't say anything else. He just said, fuck Nikki. So it's all this kind of weird sort of like promo thing. So I guess Nikki's kind of running on from that sort of suggestion that people were saying on the timeline. It continues. But I, I love also her taking the piss out of the Rock Nation brunch. I love the fact that although a lot of these celebrities try to make, they try to make that Rock Nation brunch thing seem so prestigious and cool. A lot of us regular civilians, a lot of us quote unquote fans on the outside looking in, we were looking at it thinking, this is kind of lame. This is kind of weird, isn't it? How everyone's kind of sucking up to Jay-Z and Beyonce like this. Even when you go to the Rock Nation brunch, you, not everybody's allowed to take pictures with, Jay, with Beyonce. I always thought that was a bit weird. You know, they kind of act like they, they're too good, even for other celebrities, you know? Like, they organize a brunch for their friends to come and hang out. But if you want to take pictures with Beyonce, they even act a bit too good for that. Like, oh, it's like, bro, you, you like, these are celebrities. These aren't even, like, civilians. These are celebrities and you're like being all bougie it's like fucking hell so i'm glad that other celebrities too felt that way somewhere like a nikki like yeah rock nation brunch is lame it's not just like us i like, look at it from the outside and think this is weird it continues another tweet she says um if i didn't know you if i didn't if so if you didn't if you i don't know if you peeped but they do this with every hashtag or video relating to you on youtube 
with the search algorithm in the background. Okay, so advertising Rock Nation there. It just says, yep, everyone's aware. Um, clearly, they don't care. Why should I? What well, I'm going to do, child. <laughs> Next one. So this is directly at Jay-Z. This is a very scathing one, by the way. Got everything in the world. Still spiteful and evil. Disgusting. Be happy, I beg. Go be fucking happy, nigga. In rap business, in women's business, when you got the politicians and the police, you good though. Plus that ugly, laffy taffy <laughs> alien <laughs> at Gag City DC, DTLR, LMFAO. And that I think is very poignant to say, especially when it comes to Jay Z. And I think that was a point that somebody else made in a video that I want to play here regarding this video that starring Cameron and Mace. And they made a very, very good point about Jay-Z being way too rich, way too old, way too up, way too successful to be still be holding on to these grudges and now be affecting people's like actual real life in the moment careers type of thing, which I thought was a very astute point to make. But on the flip side, having read 48 Laws of Power, there's also a section in there about destroying your enemy totally like all the way like literally you know rubbing their face in the sand <laughs> kind of thing so maybe this is part of it maybe jay-z is doing what he should be doing you guys are my enemies doesn't matter how much i'm how much up i am the fact that i don't like you means that i'm gonna continue making sure that you guys don't prosper while i'm still alive that might be part of the whole point you know what i mean but this is cameron and mace talking about the whole Listen, thing i love kendrick lamar i love to pop up i think He's one of the top artists of this generation, period. Hate this election. It's in New Orleans. You don't get Lil Wayne. You that's what we doing? Yeah. Listen, yeah. you don't get Lil Wayne in New Orleans for the hot Super Boys. Boy. Not just Hot Boys, Cash Money. All the songs Lil Wayne's done, whether it's Blink 182, there's no reason why Lil Wayne should not be performing the Super Bowl. It's one person who's stopping this. I know, you know, it's not really, it's not really a secret. Little Wayne had a problem with somebody before who's kind of part of the organization running it. This is payback. Who's that? Who's Little Wayne artist? Drake. Yeah, that not, this is this hating is, at this, this age is it, crazy. It's crazy, yeah. bro. You, bro. Bro, it's ridiculous. Like, Mike, Mike, this Mike, Mike there's some hip hop shit that you probably don't know what's going on, to be totally honest with you. Yeah. So, we'll school you behind the scenes. Little Wayne, no, not to be performing in New Orleans for the Super Bowl, is egregious. And it gotta stop. I can do it, it gotta stop. Mike, we'll tell you what's going on later. It gotta stop, bro. It gotta stop, man. Yeah, and I'm it, doubling I down on that. Wayne. Hating at this age is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yo. it's wild. I love the Wayne. I it's wild, bro. Man. I work and, for and, Wayne. I love him. Great dude. Great yeah, dude. And, no, Great and this dude, has nothing man. towards Kendrick. Kendrick. If anybody deserved it, Kendrick would deserve yeah. it. But there's some right, backstory right, shit you. going on. Yeah. While Lil Wayne is not performing the mm. Super Bowl. Okay. Oh, right. Good. Right, I can dig it. Yeah, that's sad. That's that's so that's so sad. Yeah, that's like really sad. Like, come on, my nigga, for real, bro. <laughs> you that insecure, man? Like, come on. It's crazy. It's crazy. <clears throat> Me and you were supposed to be a fanatics. Same thing. Three happened. three weeks ago, the the week before so fanatics uh -uh. happens. Oh, Cam and Mace didn't sign the contract. <laughs> we banned from fanatics, but who's in fanatics? <laughs> I'm gonna start saying names. <laughs> Yo, it's wild. Man. It's wild. The hate bro. is crazy. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, tell you. Right, we'll tell you about it later, we, Mike. Mike, we'll tell you we, about we it later. We gotta get bigger, though. Yeah, you're man. Right, though. We you right. Do. You right. Because we, we'll hold on to stuff, man. And, and and when we come together and get things done much bigger and better, mm -hmm. you're right. Yeah. And we'll hold on to it forever. So, uh, so yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah. yeah. But no, this has none against Kendrick. Yeah, Marvin. none against yeah. Kendrick. He, we, yeah, we think if you, any kind of artist deserved it, but Lil Wayne not to perform in New Orleans at the Super Bowl, it's kind of tough, man. Yeah, I just said hi, boys, because everybody's out, you know? Yeah. BG out, you know? But, you, but what I'm saying is you, you said everything right, but Lil Wayne's such a star, he could, you know how many songs he's done with other people, and then you bring the hot boys out at yeah. the end? Right. <laughs> Crazy, crazy. Yo, big up Michael Irvin as well, sounding all bunged up 
signing all bunged up, right? He's probably got a couple of eight balls up each nostril. Residue is still sitting in there. Big up fucking Michael Irvin, the legend. But yeah, they make a good point about, you know, Jay-Z maybe should be able to get over it or just put his feelings to one side and allow a legend like Lil Wayne to perform such a, you know, to do such a thing on that sort of stage. It's something that will be good for the culture overall and it's probably bigger than whatever beef or issue that he might personally have with Lil Wayne. But as I said personally before, I think there is a law in the 48 Laws of Power about destroying your enemies totally. And I'm actually going to check this up on the end now. I think there is a 48 Laws of Power. Let's see. I'm pretty sure I I'm pretty sure it is on here. Let me see if I've got this. Let me see if I've got I'm pretty sure there's a list. Actually, let me just, just write list. I'm pretty sure there's a there's a there's a actual section on there about destroying your enemies totally. So as much as I would like to get on Jay Z for being a little bit petty and just not letting things go, if you actually do have beef, you know, with someone, you should be trying to destroy them totally. And what better way than getting in the position which he is in now? where he's the fucking billionaire guy, legit billionaire guy, not even like people that just have billionaire through assets. No, he's billionaire, billionaire. So it makes complete sense why he would be doing this. So let's see here. Um, loyal, let's see some of the laws here. Never outshine the master. Never put too much for trust in friends. Um, not too much depends on reputation. Let's see. I think it's enemy, right? Enemy. Crush your enemy. There you go. Law 15. Totally crush your enemy totally that's what it says they law 15 motherfuckers totally so is jay-z wrong for denying little wayne opportunity to perform at the super bowl in his hometown yes is he wrong when it comes to the 48 laws of power no because law 15 says crush your enemy totally crush your enemy completely if you leave even one ember smoldering it will eventually ignite you can't afford to be lenient total crushing so maybe this is what jay-z is doing with what's his face at the moment this is what probably he's doing with little wayne this might be what he's doing um let's actually check this uh example oh, okay this is a end of a, this is a preview doesn't really matter but you you get the point right so let's go back to actual tweets itself so we can see what other what other tweets here was said about the particular situation so you got this about Nicki Minaj saying you got everything in the world still being spiteful and evil disgusting be happy I beg go fucking be happy nigga in rap business in women's business when you get the politicians and the police you good though plus that ugly <laughs> Laffy Taffing alien I'm not sure who the Laffy Taffing alien is but I think that's hilarious another one which is very scathing this is very scathing by the way one nigga took a knee the other nigga took up the bag he gonna get you niggas in line every fucking time. <laughs> Hashtag Keg City DC DTLR. Ouch. Another one. Go enjoy your fucking money before it's too late. Another one. Yep. And I never care by the time they figure it out. It's good for them though. Y'all ready? Y'all know this next move is going to be to tell y'all a certain someone is being treated um so unfairly so that y'all can go back into that trance <laughs> a certain someone i think he means a uh, megan the stallion another one i love watching the industry play dumb time after time the truth is the matter no matter how who tells it picking and choosing who y'all accept the truth from then bam pow might tell y'all a joke but i won't tell you a lie bah ha 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 another one our oh, same one right um da, 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 da. we got that cool cool, cool. so you see what's going on there you see what's going on there so it's just caused a whole entire shit storm everybody is suffering from the back of it in the end the really sad thing about it is that kendrick lamar's got this amazing opportunity to perform at the super bowl and it's now been completely overlooked and people are not talking about that anymore and they're talking about all the you know politics and all the other beef that's going on and essentially you could look at it another way and say jay-z essentially stole kendrick's moment he kind of co-opted it to serve his own needs to kind of you know remind the people that he has beef with that he's the one in charge that he's the big boss man right to kind of put them in their place he's kind of taken away the you know 
some of the hype, some of the joy from Kendrick's moment and made it kind of all about him. Now, I'm sure he didn't intend to do that. Maybe we're all reading into it too much. Who knows? Maybe tomorrow, fucking Lil Wayne comes out with his fucking unbothered ass, right? He's fucking annoying, unbothered ass. Lil Wayne might come out and say, you know what? I have no problem. Lil Wayne might come out tomorrow and say, you know what? Actually, I was offered the fucking Super, Super Bowl, but I couldn't do it because I have prior engagements. Maybe he could. Maybe this is all just fans going crazy. Maybe Lil Wayne would be like, hey, man, I couldn't do it because I've already booked for some tour in fucking Malta and they paid me loads of money or I've got some gig to perform in fucking the Middle East that I can't turn down or I can't cancel. That's why I can't do the Super Bowl. I'm gutted. I wish Kendrick all the best, right? Maybe Kendrick even brings out Lil Wayne. Who knows? It wouldn't be a good idea, by the way. I don't think it's a good idea if Kendrick did bring out Lil Wayne because that would look incredibly disloyal to fucking Drake. And Drake's been one of, you know, Lil Wayne's biggest proponents and champions out there. So I don't think that would be nice. But that could be possible, right? That could be fucking possible. Um, then you got also here Boosie saying something too. Boosie says, all y'all acting like y'all cool with how they playing it for the Super Bowl. SMH, the most cultural city in the USA, New Orleans. It's a smack in the face to every hip hop legend from Louisiana. Master P, Birdman. This shows they never wanted y'all to kick in the door in the first place. Because they still trying to look it. Um, Super Bowl 22 was in Cali. And Cali artists were allowed to do their thing. It was a great show. But now it's in Louisiana. And no Louisiana legends can't do their thing. Hashtag I don't respect it. To be fair. He's making a lot of good points. He's not, he's not lying here. Boosie's making a lot of great points. Now. There is a little bit of entitlement there. Just because it's in New Orleans doesn't mean. Louisiana rappers have to perform there. I'm sure there's going to be Super Bowls in other locations that won't have people from there performing, but I get what he means in totality. I do, I do get what he means. Then we got a couple more Nicki Minaj tweets. Blo bots and blogs are being sent astronomical wads of cash in the paper bag as we speak. Laugh out louds, right? Hashtag gag city. Keep loving this. Another tweet from her. Every content creator and every bot farm just got money call. Guys, check your message. Every tweet will c contain tones of engagement um, from accounts that look very peculiar when you click on them. Hashtag gags, gag, gag city tonight. My sneakers are now at DTLR. <laughs> I love it. That's what 50 Cent used to do, right? 50 Cent used to do that all the time. Whenever he'd be beefing, he'd be hashtagging all these shows and at these companies and shit at the bottom of the tweets. Another one. This is really funny though, by the way, because this person at the bottom called Tori Wan Kenobi, um, hashtag Majesty Raya, is somebody that I follow on social and usually has a lot of really cool and interesting hot takes on music. Um, and she's always kind of getting involved and throwing some really good hot takes out there. So I was, I was, it was wild when I saw her get <laughs> quote tweeted by Nikki. I was like, shit. <laughs> Oh no, what's happening? So this person tweeted to Nikki, or tweeted about the situation, not to Nikki, about the situation, and said the first rapper to headline the Super Bowl halftime show um, needed to be somebody who would represent his art to the highest degree. That's not Lil Wayne in 2024. So this person, Majesty Raya, is trying to be very respectful in saying that, some people are also saying this on social, not only me, that maybe this version of Lil Wayne at the moment isn't maybe the version needed to represent hip-hop on the highest level and maybe his performances as of late have been quite lackluster and very bad that people won't want to see him perform on the Super Bowl stage it might be a bit of an embarrassment and he might do more harm and good to his legacy so maybe take some time away build yourself up again live performances wise let people kind of want you know make people want you again to see you perform live again you know that kind of Maybe we'll kind of remind people about your power performing live and your talent. Da, 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 da. So obviously Nicki Minaj did not agree with this person's assessment because she said the following. God will punish you. What an opening line. God will punish you. <laughs> That's a tweet. <laughs> Mark my words. The man that has not only pushed this pen the hardest but gave the game more than one hip-hop icon, he's talking about her, of course, and Drake, as well on his watch, 
represent the rap game? The best rapper don't represent the rap game well enough for you? Black people, wow. If this don't hurt your heart to read, it will one day. Look at how our legends keep being treated after they've given so much to us. Who are you? You God? Judgmental swine. Delete. You will regret tweeting this. Life is funny that way. Don't you dare turn your nose up at Little Wayne, you dick munching bozo. At Gag City DC <laughs> tonight, my sneakers are now at DTLR. So grateful for this partnership. <laughs> Honestly, what is wrong with this woman? How do you start a tweet off by saying, God will punish you, mark my words, and then end it by saying, my sneakers are now at DTLR. So grateful for this partnership. Gotta love capitalism, innit? Gotta love living in a capitalistic world. <laughs> this is a good time to promote and market your shit. So there's Nikki saying what she said to her, right? And there's a lot to unpack there, but essentially, Nikki and what I think a lot of kind of like approaching legacy act status people are saying, you, you get the feeling a lot of them are kind of basically saying that there's not a lot of respect in the industry, especially amongst hip hop people, or especially within the hip hop industry, sorry, for the legends. They kind of get overlooked, they kind of get dismissed. I think you even saw it with 50 Cent, I'm not going to lie, and G Unit. I, d I don't know if I'm talking out my ass here. But I feel like G-Unit Renaissance came because of the tours that they were doing in Europe and outside of North America. I feel like a lot of people kind of maybe, I wouldn't say turn their nose up at them, but maybe didn't give the respect that they deserved. Then they go over to Europe, of course, in places where they don't usually go. And the fan bases over there are crazy and they're still in love with the stuff that they do. And a lot of those guys are still looked as icons. And then they get reminded, and then they get reminded, oh shit, these guys are actually really important. They gave us a lot of hits. They gave us a lot of great moments. They're still some of our best performers. Like you see 50 perform live and you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's it. Um, D Dubai, big up Chiefs for exactly, yeah, D D Dubai. So I think maybe a lot of these legends are starting to realize now that they're not getting a lot. They're not getting the love and the respect that they think they should be getting from home, hey, home base. So they're getting annoyed by it. They're getting frustrated. They're getting maybe worried for what's to come for the end of their career. And now they're seeing it play out in real time with somebody that they're close with or they know it's probably worrying them. Really, It's really fucking worrying them. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, how are we not respecting people who have done so much for the culture and for us and we're not honoring their legacy? We're not really talking to them with, we're not really talking about them with reverence on this malarkey. But I also think a lot of that is a bit like, come on, like, you know, just because you're a legacy, it doesn't mean you're above reproach. Doesn't mean people aren't allowed to have a difference of a difference of opinion when it comes to how they're viewed or artistically or stage wise or whatever it may be called. I think it's fairly okay what that lady said. She was being very polite about it as well. So I'm okay with it. I don't really mind. And then another one here says her director is talking about Kendrick. Because I think a lot of people are basically saying that she and a lot of people are using the name Kendrick to kind of get out Jay Z. Because no one wants to say Jay Z's name too much because he don't want to end up in a fucking bar. <laughs> so people are kind of using Kendrick's name as a way to kind of talk about Jay Z. But um, Nikki was kind of direct here or more direct and made it very clear and says, You can love and respect Kendrick and still love and respect Wayne. Even Kendrick loves and respects Wayne. Every real rapper loves and respects Wayne. Hashtag Gag City tonight is tonight. <laughs> the whole DMV area. I'll see y'all soon. We'll have a beautiful, magical, successful show. So clearly. This again is something that I thought was very interesting because I felt like Kendrick has always made it clear how much of a big fan of Lil Wayne he has been. And in another situation, if he wasn't beefing with Drake, I think he would have bought out Lil Wayne anyway. You know, that's the situation. So unfortunately, because of their ongoing beef, I don't think Lil Wayne will go out for his loyalty to Drake. But in any other situation, Kendrick would have definitely bought out Lil Wayne. But, you know, he can't do it now. It's too late. But yeah, that's the situation at the moment beef never ending between all of these situations and like i said before it's really unfortunate because kendrick's moment gets taken away from him you know it's such a monumental moment it's such a great achievement it's most likely going to be an incredible show and now it's all been mired and it's all been overtaken by this nonsense debate and conjecture and talk and whatever it may be about you know the kind of 
the chess pieces of the game and how things move and who's on top and who isn't and ongoing beef and blah 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 but one thing that is for sure one thing that is for sure like it's good to see that the tide is changing around jay-z as much as i love jay-z as an mc and a rapper because i've been a big fan of the joe Budden podcast and listen to new warrior more for a few years it's kind of been nauseating and almost uncomfortable to hear how these guys just suck jay-z off and everything that he does is good and he's so smart and intelligent and he just knows so much more than everybody else and he moves so strategically and people are reading into the most minute things and making it to this it's just annoying it's nauseating when at the heart of it all you see really if you if you're not really the biggest kind of fan of his is the kind of you know is the selfishness really right is the unparalleled <laughs> levels of greed and you know and just basically pure capitalism and not really you know pretending to be like for the people pretending to be all about the culture pretending to be all about black people especially in america but then really just using it as opportunity to sell things and to you know to sell people things and whatever it may be called and then i also have never really liked and this is something it's a bit of a small pet peeve of mine when it comes to jay i've never liked the kind of like condescending tone he has when he raps as well when he mentions certain things oh your niggas are still doing this i'm doing this now your niggas are still doing that i got this now you know my paintings are worth more than your houses it's like bro of course they are you're like 50 something years old you've been in the game forever you're the best mc you make all the money of course you're gonna have everything like of course you're gonna have george condos in your fucking kitchen like it doesn't mean my little fucking small ikea live laugh love you know frame picture thing isn't as good or isn't valuable or isn't worthy <laughs> of adoration you know he's out here telling people to buy one thing then when he when it gets to bay and everyone's buying it and he's too rich he then says nah don't buy that that shit's lame it's like bro make your mind up man make your mind up and stop poor shaming you know what i mean it's so annoying but hey what can we do what can we do i'm actually looking for a live. i'm actually really looking forward to a live show and it's funny too by the way it's funny too it's happening in february of 2025 all of this beef all of this arguments all of this talking all of this fucking bickering and this shit is happening in february of 2025 motherfuckers it's not even it's like it's happening in december february <laughs> at the end of february it's like fucking hell oh yeah yeah i'm tired of it i'm over it already i'm over it already